today. Lumelo, at a joint press briefing yesterday, commended the bold steps of the governors for taking a calmer position on national issues despite their party differences. The governors had on Monday in Lagos rejected moves to alter the Electoral Act to remove electronic transmission of results and the passage of the Petroleum Industry Bill with a 3% share of oil revenue for host communities. President Muhammadu Buhari yesterday decorated the new Chief of Army Staff, Major General Farouk Yahaya, with the rank of Lieutenant General. The brief occasion was held in the State House shortly before the weekly Federal Executive Council meeting. ITV State House correspondent Iharata has report. The brief occasion was attended by the Chief of Defense Staff, Loki Irabo, and the Inspector General of Police, Usman Alkali, amongst others. President Buhari and Vice President Yemi Oshibanjo jointly decorated the Army Chief with the rank of Lieutenant General. to State House correspondent shortly after he was decorated with his new rank, the Army Chief says the Nigerian Army will give his best to ensure that current security challenges bedeviling some parts of the country are fully addressed. He also pledged his own alert loyalty to the President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces as well as the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We are already all uh, getting successes. We will leverage on that, including our experience in, in this job. And uh, by the grace of God, we shall get there. That's what we have started doing already. And uh, many of them have been sent to God to go and answer for their crimes. We we'll continue to do that. Also speaking, the Minister of Defense, retired Major General Bashir Magashi, said the new Army Chief had seen started his job very well. Magashi said all those perpetrating insecurity in parts of the country will be brought to book as the law will take its course against them. He added that those picking arms against security personnel will be punished. Right from this resumption today, there is a lot of improvement in the way we are fighting this crime. The planning is thorough, the activities are going according to operational plans, and I'm sure. With that kind of to get out of the surgery program. Lieutenant General Yaya was appointed as the new army chief on May 27 after the death of Ibrahim Atairu, who died in a plane crash on May 24. Until his appointment, the army chief was the theater commander of the Operation Hadin Cape in the northeastern region of the country. From the Asarok Presidential Villa, Ikaro Atta, ITV News, Abuja. The Federal Executive Council has approved 17.4 billion naira for the purchase of a property in Lagos to serve as the new headquarters of the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency. ITV State House correspondent Ikarata reports that the council also approved 16 billion naira for erosion control in 12 states and the federal capital territory. President Muhammad Buhari presided over the meeting. As usual, the Federal Executive Council hold its meeting behind closed doors, and this is no exception. Briefing State House correspondent on decision reach at this week's council meeting, Transportation Minister Rotimi Chibike Amechi revealed that the sum of 17.4 billion naira was approved for the purchase of a property in Lagos to serve as the new headquarters for the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, NIMASA. The council approved for the purchase of Kanti Towers, which is located at uh, 35 Pilot Tukumba, Demola Street, Victoria Island, Lagos, for the new headquarters of uh, Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, which is NIMASA, in the sum of 17 billion, 471 million 
5,130 naira and 54 cobalt, inclusive of 7.5% tax. Thank you very much. The new office complex, according to government, is a 16-story building consisting of the latest technology fittings, a helipad, and a parking bay for over 100 cars. Also, council approved the sum of 16 billion naira for erosion control in 12 states and the federal capital territory. Special advisor to the president on media and publicity, Mr. Femi Adesino, briefed on this. These are the projects that were approved. Erosion flood control, bridge reconstruction and road improvement at Umweyi Umpa, communities of Bende, local government area in Abia State. Then we have Gully Erosion Control Works at Umokoro, Lower Okata Community, Ihite Oboma, local government area in Imo State. The presidential spokesperson said the comprehensive sum for the contract stood at 16 billion 41 million 101,334 naira 79 kobo. From the Azura Presidential Villa, Iharo Atta, ITV News, Abuja. The importance of maintaining the zoning of public offices in Nigeria, including the highly exalted office of the president to the survival of the nation's floating democracy, has been conversed by firm of South-South governors as split stakeholders in Benin City. Efosawangwe spoke with stakeholders, and here are his findings. Two days ago, the Southern governors, rising from a crucial meeting in Lagos State, insisted in a resolution that the next president in 2023 must come from the southern part of Nigeria. The issue has been generating reactions and counter-reactions from stakeholders. A Benin-based businessman and politician, Mr. Sonia Agwebo, welcomed the stand of the governors. He said if the zoning formula was not strictly adhered to, it would lead to cheating of some regions. So honestly, I'm in support, full support of that demand. The Saturners should produce the next president. The demand of the governor was legitimate. It was right. It's not about competence, like I said earlier. You have competent people all over the country. Even the smallest village in Nigeria, you have very competent people. A former chairman, Nigeria Union of Journalists, NUJ, Edo State Council, and State Publicity of the APC, Mr. Godwin Iran, said the South has enough credible and competent persons who can position Nigeria. And the only way to, uh, to to, to maintain uh, equity and ensure that every area at one time or the other expect it and by following the rule that at the end of the day it gets to area that it has not got into is to ensure that these things are rotated. You cannot dispute the fact that the division of Nigeria is not south. A former lawmaker and legal practitioner, Mr. Dele Ibinadion, said the resolution of the Southern governors was lawfully backed and there is no part of the country where qualified persons with credibility and integrity are lacking. It's in fulfillment of the law that there must be rotationalism in our choice of our leaders. I believe that people from every sector of the country are qualified or is qualified to rule, to govern. So as Northerners are qualified, so Southerners are also qualified. As course southerners are qualified, so people from the southeast are also qualified. As people from the southeast are qualified, so people from the northeast 
Northwest, North Central are also qualified. So our president can come from anywhere, and yes, we should rotate it. With the resolution of the Southern Governor's stance, only time will tell. A FOSA one way reporting. A suspected kidnapper, Unoma Erere Tianhoi, who earlier escaped police arrest in 2019 after collecting millions of naira from his victim, has been rearrested to face trial. Respondent Wellington accorded a report that a young man and his gang, who allegedly ambushed a bank customer, was also arrested. According to police information, on the 18th of December 2019, Mrs. Juliet Okomina was kidnapped to her business place. She was said to have stayed in captivity for 10 days, and after which a huge ransom was paid by the victim's family. The police commenced investigation into the crime, and two suspects were arrested out of the former gang. The said suspect confessed to the crime, and they were charged to court in 2019, pointing out that Mr. Hunoma, who earlier escaped arrest and flew to other states, again returned to Benin City with the intention to commence his kidnapping before he was arrested by the police. Also, a suspect, John Anyangu, from Agonta, local government area of Imo State, and his gang were at Urumi, Isa Northeast local government area, and traced a bank customer from Urumi to Irua and collected over 1 million naira from the victim. The police public relations tongues said the commissioner of police, Mr. Philip Ogbando, had given directives that all criminals on the wanted list of the police must be made to pay for their crime. Anybody that is engaged in criminal activities should either relocate from the state because the commissioner that is in charge of Edo State presently, CP, Philip Aliu Obadu, PSC Daga, he is not leaving any stone on top in terms of security. If you cannot stop criminality, you better relocate from the state. The suspect comments on their alleged role in the crime. This particular kidnap you want to do, how much you get for inside? 800. Huh? 800 again. How much total amount you want to Okay, 3, three uh, million. 3 million? Yes, sir. How many of you? Four of us. Now, this guy be a leader. Hercules. Yes. So where in court now? Hercules, the prison. I'm from Imo State. He gave one of my brother. We carry me come, say, my man go carry money. So go steal money? Yeah. From where? From, uh, I don't know the place. I don't know the place. Now he carry me. So it's not that thing, that thing happen. We pursue the man. We pursue the man. I don't know the place. Okay, how do I tell you the man carry money? Nine team is saying the man carry money. According to the police, the suspect will be charged to court soon. Wellington Hakodeja reporting. Two witnesses yesterday testified as hearing began in the case of alleged murder of Mrs. Sharon Ojefo by wife of a police officer, Ella Akinola, in Benin City. Kingsley Uchebu has details of this and other matters that came up in court. At the hearing, the first prosecution witness, Mr. Desmond Uumauge, under cross-examination by counsel to the defendants by Mr. Paul Osayenkoy, told the court that evidence at the scene of crime was already tampered with when he arrived. He said he could not witness the testimony of the celebrant, Mrs. Beauty Ajilo, as he was asked to leave the scene by some police officers, but later heard from the DPO, a Tete division, that the deceased, Mrs. Sharon Ogiefo, allegedly stabbed herself to death during a scuffle with Ella Akiola. Second prosecution witness, who is also the husband of the late Sharon Ogiefo. Richie Ogiefo testified that he witnessed a scuffle between his late wife and the defendant Ella Akinola during a birthday party where she allegedly stabbed his wife with a broken bottle. He maintained that evidence at the scene of crime was tampered with during the process of rescuing his wife but however admitted that it was not included in his earlier statement. On conclusion of cross-examination of the two witnesses, State Counsel Mrs. Osula requested Defense Counsel Barrister Paul Osayenkoy to call for more witnesses for further hearing. In an interview, counsel to the defendant, Barrister Paul Osayenkoy, said, with the beginning of hearing, more witnesses are expected to testify before the court. The prosecution opened his case by calling two witnesses. At the end of the trial, the court will decide 
on the guilt or otherwise of the defendant. Presiding Judge Justice Efe Ibomaba adjourned for continuation of hearing on the matter to 21st July 2021. Meanwhile, members of civil society organizations in Edo State were in court in solidarity with husband of the deceased. And he, he was the court reserved 28 July 2021 to adopt final address from counsel to appellant by Stamatias Obaiwana in alleged murder of late Michael Chidema, a student of the University of Benin, allegedly killed on December 13, 2016, in a custodian by the head of a vigilance group in the area. Kingsley Uchebu reporting. Preparations are in top gear for the second edition of the On Air Into School debate and quiz competition organized by independent television and radio to celebrate excellence in academics. Chairman ITV Radio Special Events Committee, Pastor Sonny Duke Okosun, said arrangements are in the final stage. Stating in one of our estates for 50 by 100. Some of the print videos we give you this. I present you, Emanuela, this laptop being the number one of the essay competition, the maiden edition organized by ITV. Congratulations. That was a presentation of prizes that include a laptop computer to Ahime Melody Esser, who took first in the junior secondary school essay and quiz competition, and Emanuela, who took first position in the senior category of the 2020 edition of the inter-school essay and quiz competition organized by independent television and radio as part of its corporate social responsibility. The chairman, ITV and Radio Special Event Committee, Pastor Sonny Duke Okosun, said the station is poised to fulfilling its corporate social responsibility. He said the event, which will hold this week's Friday by 10 o'clock in the morning at the communications village, Igosa, said the first prize will be a landed property for the junior and senior secondary school categories. We are changing the narratives about value for education because you know that in the society, uh, our youth this day, they are being distracted by so many things they see. But we want to give them a sense of belonging and help them to retrace their steps and um, start thinking uh, because education is key for anybody to make substantial impact in the society uh, you must be educated and that is what we are emphasizing with this uh, event so we are ready for it according to sonny duke okosun the program will be held in line with the covid 19 protocols and encouraged all participating students to prepare adequately so as to emerge tops best mbere reporting
We apologize for that break. It was due to a technical inch. We now continue with the one news. Four people suspected of assassinating Haiti's president, Jovenel Moss, have been killed in a shootout with the security forces. Two others have been detained, while some remaining suspects are thought to be still at large in the nation's capital, but au prince. Police Chief Leon Charles said that they will be killed or captured. Mr. Moss aged 53, was fatally shot, and his wife was injured when attackers stormed their home early on Wednesday. The president was reportedly hit by multiple bullets, and his office and bedroom were ransacked. First Lady Martin Morris has been flown to Florida, where she's said to be in a critical condition, but stable, and is receiving treatment. Mr. Morris became president in 2017, but in recent times faced widespread protests demanding his resignation. South African's former president Jacob Zuma has handed himself into the police to begin serving a 15 more day sentence for contempt of court. He was admitted to Escort Correctional Center in his home province of KwaZulu Natal on Wednesday. I plead not guilty. Jacob Zuma, aged 79, was handed the J-10 last week after he failed to attempt a corruption inquiry. The sentence sparked an unprecedented legal drama in South Africa, which has never seen a former president jailed before. Zuma had initially refused to hand himself in, but in a short statement on Wednesday, the Jacob Zuma Foundation said he had decided to comply. Being jailed without a trial is not different to the apartheid detention without trial. Zuma was sentenced on 29 June for defying an instruction to give evidence at an inquiry into corruption during his nine years in power. Adesua Lato reporting. Rescue teams combined the rubble of a collapsed apartment building in Florida are switching from a search and rescue mission to a recovery effort. The decision comes about two weeks after the 12-story complaint towards South fell in the middle of the night. Southside city officials and 54 victims have been found and 86 are still missing. No survivors have been found since the initial collapse and rescue crews say many victims were found in their beds. News that the rescue mission was ending came during a private meeting on Wednesday between families of the missing and Miami Dade Assistant Fire Chief Ray Jadala. Southside Mayor Charles Bucket later said the death toll has jumped by 10. On Wednesday, after suicide officials said they were able to remove a large section of concrete. Adesua Lato reporting. The UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson has been criticized by members of Parliament Standard Watchdog for failing to promptly explain how a trip to Moscow was founded. However, he has been declared of breaching the rules. An inquiry was launched into the Prime Minister's 2019 Caribbean holiday after confusing overall paid for the trip. The Standards Committee has now concluded that Mr. Johnson's account was accurate and complete, but it added that it was regrettable a full explanation had not come earlier. Mr. Johnson declared that his 15,000 pounds holiday accommodation on the Caribbean island had been covered by Carfon Warehouse co-founder David Rose. Following an investigation, the Standards Committee concluded that Mr. Rose had donated the accommodation but added that the arrangement had been ad hoc and informal and did not appear to have been fully explained to Mr. Johnson at the outset. Afghan troops have recaptured government buildings in a western city which was attacked by the Taliban. 
On Wednesday, the Taliban entered Kuala Ennau, the first direct assault on a provincial capital since the U.S. began pulling out its last troops. Airstrikes were used and special forces deployed to push the fighters back. The Taliban have been making gains at the U.S. and allies put out. A spokesperson from the Military of Interior Affairs said the city had been cleared of Taliban fighters and that it was now fully under the control of Afghan security forces. The Taliban have seized many districts in recent weeks and are now taught to control about third of the country, making new gains on a daily basis. So far, provincial capitals have remained under government control. Under a deal with the Taliban, the U.S. and its NATO allies agreed to withdraw all troops in return for the commitment by militants that they prevent extremists from operating as they control. And now talking sports, Japan has declared a state of emergency in Tokyo, which will run throughout the Olympics game. Prime Minister Yoshida Hade Suga said it would remain in place until 22 August, but it did not give details on the restrictions. Coronavirus infections are rising in Tokyo as the 22 July opening ceremony edges closer. There has been widespread opposition to the Games in Japan and calls for them to be postponed or cancelled. The declaration was made after a meeting between the organizing committee, the government and International Olympic Committee President Thomas Bach was just arrived in Japan. The Olympics Games are scheduled to take place in the Japanese capital between 23 July and 8 August. The Paralympic Games are between 24 August and 5 September. And to end the world news, a look again at the top stories. Four people suspected of assassinating the 80s President Jovenel Moors has been killed in the shootout with the security forces. And South, African, and South African's former President Jacob Zuma has handed himself into the police to begin serving a 15 month jail sentence for contempt of court. And we brought to you the Rescue teams convened the rubble of a collapsed apartment in Florida, switching from a search rescue mission to recovery effort. And that was the news as read by. Thanks for watching. Have a good afternoon. Independent television news, truly independent. Hello, students. Today, you are all going to answer this very important question for me. Which do you prefer? Dump anything into your stomach, fall ill, and pay the doctor later, or pay a good cook? We will pay a good cook. I prefer a good cook. Pay the good cook. A variety of nourishing and delicious African continental dishes are all yours for asking. Mobile outdoor catering services also available at Omega, Omega Restaurant and Bar, 125 New Lagos Road by Okara Junction and 248 Wall Lagos Road, Benin today. Omega Guest House, 4 and 20, Upper Color Street of AA. Telephone 0803-572-1138. Omega, yesterday's dream, today's reality. Omega the good cook, we're here for you.
ITV Radio 2021 Inter School Quiz Debate and Essay Competition. Grand Finale, Friday 9th July 2021 at ITV Radio Live Studio, Igwosa or local time, 10 a.m. Primary schools only. Quiz competition, secondary schools, essay and debate competition, essay topic, Nigeria and the challenges of national unity. Debate topic, state policing, the panacea 